Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. Um, if you are new, please consider subscribing. Hit subscribe and notification. Um, you'll be sure to get notified when uh, I upload a new video. If you like this kind of content, I appreciate your support. Um, today, we're going to be taking a look at um, Carol King's 1971 uh, release, Tapestry, which um, I have in a Classic Records uh, 1999 version and the new One Step, which just arrived. Um, I listened to uh, the classic records first. I've had it since it came out. Um, it's not something I grab off the shelf very often, although sometimes I will just to see if my opinion has changed about it. I mean, the, the music is without question. Wonderful songwriting. Um, the musicianship is really good. Uh, you know, it's a great album. It's number one selling album up there with the other uh, top selling albums of all time. And there's no no issue about that. Whether you like that type, this type of music is an acquired taste. I do. Um, and I'm happy to hear it once in a while. But something's always bothered me about this record. And <clears throat> or I could say this recording. Um, Apparently it wasn't recorded that well. And the main offender is Carol's voice. On the, on all pressings I've ever heard, um, the voice veers into near distortion. Like it's going up into the red. Maybe it's her voice itself, but when she hits a peak, it's a little glary. It's a little almost distorted. Um, on almost any pressing. It's not my setup. It's on any setup. Um, and this has always held the record back for me. Um, early pressings also had, I mean, the original Ode label pressings always had issues with vinyl, um, with too many stampers. I mean, they made millions and millions of these. And the quality is varied all over the place, but mostly poor. And probably uh, when the CD came out, that was probably a welcome relief, although I've never heard it from the crappy 70s vinyl that a lot of these were pressed on. So when the classic came out, I was really excited to get my final copy of Tapestry something everyone should have in their collection, I think. And, you know, I wanted a, I wanted the best copy that could be. And the Bernie Grunman remaster is an improvement. Um, it cannot solve the problems with the voice overloading, the thin piano sound. Um, you know, it, it tried to address some of that, but it still sounds veiled in places. It's weird because the the vocal does seem like a little harsh in points, but it's not like it's also kind of behind a veil. And it's just weird. It's just weird. And it's unfortunate, but um, it is what it is. Um, so, you know, Bernie did the best he could with it. It sounded okay. I listened to it again. I realized why I don't often grab it off the shelf. It's not because he did a poor job. It's just the recording is just not audiophile, an audiophile recording, period. Um, so I was wondering what could they do with a one step? And they've had a really good record so far in bringing even mediocre um, albums up to snuff. And I thought, well, I really hesitated on it because I was like, I don't know if I want to just give in to fear of missing out and get this. Um, so I didn't. I didn't order it until it went out of, out, of, out of print. And then I was like, frantically searched around for a copy. <laughs> and I found that Acoustic Sounds was still accepting orders. And I, I got one from them. It came this week. 
So the differences I heard, oh, let me show you. It's, it's the same thing as always. A big bulky box with not too much in it. Some foam, a reproduction of the artwork. And, oh, and the one step, um, one step sheet, the two, these two things, you know, I've talked about the packaging before. I'm not going to go into that, but it would be nice if there was a nice gatefold in there. I'll just say that much. Um, so they have done a good job with this and they have improved where the, where there were weaknesses. One of the main things that has improved is Carol's voice. Now it cannot solve what's on the tape, which is that high peak kind of um, veering into distortion sound. Um, it happens on a couple places. Um, it happens on any pressing. But what they've done is remove that veil between you and Carol. She's much more clear, more upfront, separated a little better. The instrument separation is better. The bass is deeper which is a big plus also. That's probably the second biggest thing about this. Now, some people have complained that it's, it's too much bass. Personally, I didn't think so, but I don't have a system that goes down super low. So to me, it sounded just right. Um, I can adjust my subwoofer, subwoofer if ne necessary, but um, no, it sounded, it sounded great. It actually fleshed out the piano and that was really important to me um, because the piano sound has always been a little inconsistent. Sometimes it's very thin. Sometimes it just doesn't sound like, you know, the piano is like her main instrument. It should have been recorded really well. And it's not actually recorded that well. I don't think, I mean, it's not like an audio file recording for sure, but you know, they, they improve this. And so you got improvements in her voice, which is great. Got improvements in the piano. Uh, the overall sound is fleshed out. There's more separation. It's less muddy. Um, and it's a much more engaging listen. I was very pleased. I was very pleased and really surprised that it came out so well. Um, I thought, you know, maybe this one is going to be their first failure, but it isn't. It isn't at all. Um, <clears throat> it's it's uh, probably the best this record is ever going to sound. And... If you're a big fan of the record, it's probably the copy you want to get. Um, there is a classic 45 around. Um, I've never heard that, but based on the mastering, <coughs> excuse me, decisions on this one step and what Bernie did here, I kind of feel like this is probably the one oh, out of those two. I can't say for sure because I don't have it, but um, yeah, I mean, if, if it's still available and you like this album a lot, I would get it. Oh, another another um, great thing about this uh, 45 is the last songs on each side, way, way Over Yonder and You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, particularly You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, suffered from being at the end of the side on the original pressings and even the classic. Here, they have much more space, so they're less compressed, they sound better. Um, that's a big plus as well, especially with You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. There's a lot of background vocals and it can get a little a little congested sounding on the original pressings. So that is a big plus as well. All in all, it's a win-win um, for, uh, you know, for Carol King's Tapestry, for the One Step series. Um, again, it's not an audio file recording, but it's probably the best that it'll ever sound. And that's a good thing. So thank you uh, for listening. This is Scott for the Pressing Matters. We'll see you next time.